walking up to the stage right now is our lead on video production. You've probably seen him in just a few videos of ours, uh, Brett Medlock. How's it going, everybody? There's more people than I expected, so I'm pretty happy. Yeah. This is a good turnout so far. I'm happy that everybody showed up. Love your hat, by the way. That's awesome. So I'll let Eli uh, explain the rules of what we're doing. So we're going to attempt to break down the top 10 Nintendo games of all time. There's no promises that we'll get there, but we'll do our best. So, yeah, we decided to uh, copy a little bit the format of what NBC did uh, a few years ago on one of their podcasts, uh, except we know what we're talking about. So hopefully our list will uh, be the real definitive one. <laughs> Uh, so the way it works is that over the last week, we've each posted our top 10 list of all times on our website um, that you can go look at, and uh, we only chose games that were exclusive to Nintendo platforms. So even though, in my view, Okami is one of the best Zelda games, I couldn't put it on the list. Um, and then uh, we also, mo most of us put like the most updated version. So Wind Waker HD was on a lot of our lists. I think it's kind of the same for us either way, uh, but we did put usually the most updated version. Uh, for our game today, we've got our top 10 list up there. You'll see it updated in real time. Uh, and as it goes around to each of us, um, we'll have the option to either add a game to the list, swap two games on the list, or uh, remove a game from the list. So it might get a little intense. And then at the end, uh, once we've finished with our list and like taking each other's games off and stuff like that, uh, we'll allow the audience to also come up and uh, add their games to the list that they believe. Uh, and tell us why. Yeah, and tell us why. Yeah, so if there's a Nintendo exclusive that you think needs to be on this list and we don't put it up there, uh, if time allows, we'll, we'll have you guys come up and, and, and pitch why, why that game deserves to be on the top 10. So let's start it off with Eli. Yep. Uh, so make a pick. It's going to require some strategic planning here to make sure the list looks how I want it to look. So I'll start with uh, putting uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 at the uh, number fourth place, please. What? <laughs> People are already mad at you. <laughs> Do explain. So here's the thing. Uh, I think that Super Mario Galaxy 2, it's not the new, it wasn't as new a concept, obviously, as the first game, but I think it was the most refined 3D Mario experience for me. I think, uh, you know, the first Galaxy obviously blew many of our minds, the idea of just traversing in this 3D, uh, literally 3D sphere. Um, and there were just so many extra mechanics added in the second game that really made it a worthwhile title. And I went and collected, I think I went the second time through and collected almost all the gold stars the second time around. So uh, really, and also if you play it on your Wii U and hook it up to an HD screen and it upscales, it still looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Not, not for a Wii game. <laughs> uh, am I next? Yeah. No. Just Andrew's why next. Do you disagree? Going, why going. do you disagree with Mario, Super Mario Galaxy 2? Well, first off, I hope you plan on putting at least Mario Galaxy 1 at number 3 because it's obviously the better game. That's false, but that's okay. <laughs> I didn't like what Super Mario Galaxy 2 did to the old... Like, it did exactly what the new Super Mario Brothers games did, and it gave you just an overworld and you selecting each level. I like having that hub world that opens up new sections, similar to Mario 64, but obviously not as, like, not as good. But it completely went away from that, and that's why I didn't like it as much. But Yoshi was pretty cool. Yeah. Andrew, all right. Uh, uh, let's roll back a bit and put Donkey Kong Country 2 at number six. Why? Uh, okay, well, I've long held the belief that Donkey Kong Country is the best Nintendo platforming series. Um, I had to, I narrowly chose between Donkey Kong Country 2 and Tropical Freeze for my Donkey Kong Country representative. Uh, what I like more about, the reason I like Donkey Kong Country 2 more is, like, really the games are very neck and neck for me in terms of level design, music, and all that. But Donkey Kong Country 2 has it where you can't save level to level, so there's a lot of really tense sections where you'll be going through, like, three or four levels at a time before you can save, and that added some extra like intensity to it for me that made it a much more memorable experience in the end. See, but I'd argue that in terms of a, of a platform like that, the games are already challenging enough, and putting that element into them just sort of, I don't know, for me at least, uh, lengthens the experience and makes it a lot less uh, accessible. I mean, for me, the... Uh, I like the, the added challenge, I think, took it a bit higher up, but I'll fight about that later. I will say, though, you made the wrong choice. 
between the two there that you were choosing from, uh, there was a better game. What's the better game? Tropical Freeze is the better game. Well, yeah, in terms of, yeah, arguing those two, Tropical Freeze is definitely the better game. And but. let me go on a mini rant here. A lot of old games, they're still good, but they're not as good as you remember them if you were to play them for the first time today. And this is a hard fact for a lot of people to accept, but Tropical Freeze is the better game. Cool. So I guess getting into my pick, I'll swap number six uh, and put Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. You're swapping? Yeah. Because like Eli said, it is the better game. I think Tropical Freeze, it looks so gorgeous. The platforming is pretty much perfect and you can't really, you, you, don't, you can't beat the bosses. I think there's just so much, uh, you know, I, I, there's a difference in, in, all, in all the bosses and I think that um, each one provides a different challenge. And like even the first boss, it's like you're, you're gonna struggle a few times, you know? Anything to add? No, I mean, I think the game is gorgeous and the music is spectacular. Um, I think there's a lot of small details in the environment as you're playing through that really surprise you and look crisp. Um, and overall, I mean, the game's challenging, but it's not like, but it's a fun type of challenging. And, and I never got mad playing the game. And sometimes, you know, the game's too hard, you'll get angry. And this is not the case here. It is perfect. I thought it was a little too hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's my turn to pick the next game. All right, so I know we said that we weren't gonna do this, but I'm just gonna do it. And it's Ocarina of Time is number one, in my opinion. It changed 3D action adventure games forever. It's still, in my opinion, the best Zelda game, the most accessible. If I'm to, rec if I'm to recommend a Zelda game to anybody, it's Ocarina of Time, especially the 3DS one. So I'll just go ahead and say Ocarina of Time for 3DS is the best Zelda game. <laughs> Anything to add? Uh, well, that game is taking is going to be taken off in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'd argue Ocarina of Time. It does a lot of things well, but it's definitely the third best Zelda game. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. So uh, make your pick. I guess I'm next. And if you read any of our lists, you should have probably seen this coming because all of us put this game in our top three. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and put Wind Waker uh, as number one instead of Ocarina of Time. I completely agree with this. Swapping or swapping? Well, well, I'm I'm not even bumping. I'm swapping. Ah, uh, what? <laughs> I can't even put it back. It can go somewhere else on the list. If Why you do you love Wind Waker? Okay, so Wind Waker, first of all, has some of the best fighting mechanics of any Zelda game. I'd say Breath of the Wild now comes close. Um, I think Breath of the Wild has wonderful mechanics, but. Uh, but Wind Waker has the best fighting uh, mechanics of any Zelda game in my view. Uh, it's got a wonderful exploration. It's kind of one of those first large open world games that really gripped me. Um, and the dungeons are, I don't, I think it has, well, not the dungeons, but uh, the, the bosses are some of the best in the Zelda series as well. Yeah, and I think something Wind Waker does that most other Zelda games don't is Link has a personality. You, you start off and he, he cares about his sister and it, it throws you into the story and it seems like He's not just that blank avatar, he's, he's a character with emotion. And I think for that reason, along with uh, the cell shaded art style that allows for a lot more emotion to be seen in Link's, uh, in Link's appearance, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm for that pick. Yeah, I I also agree. I also agree that Wind Waker is amazing. And because he just said this, it actually has a story and Link, for the first time, he's not just waking up and becoming this hero, he's forced to become a hero. He wait, like, he's just having a normal average day and then one day his sister gets like taken away from him because she's like mistaken for Tetra, I think it was, right? And uh, yeah, so that, I thought that was pretty cool. And I also think it does have the best fighting. But I also like Twilight Princess's uh, like special attacks it added. You know what I'm talking about, maybe? But yeah, I, I love Wind Waker, especially the Wii U one, it looks amazing. And, and it's another thing, graphics aged better than like any game, like almost, like it still looks beautiful. So yeah, who's next? Oh, uh, that's me. Um, I'm gonna concur on Wind Waker. Uh, just exploring the Great Sea was so fantastic, but you guys have heard enough about Wind Waker in the last couple minutes, so I'm gonna go right to my pick. Let's throw uh, Xenoblade Chronicles in, in front of Galaxy 2. Y'all can applaud too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in front of Galaxy 2. Yeah. Uh, a little bit on Xenoblade. Uh, there was this huge effort to get this game localized in the American
Americas, and I am so happy it happened. Um, it is a really totally gripping game. You have C2 up there. Not much yeah. Xenoblade 2. Chronicles, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. No, not Xenoblade, Xenoblade 2. 2. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just not Xenoblade 2. <laughs> just regular Xenoblade 2. I could have sworn you said 2. There okay. no, was Shulk in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Really what specifically about Xenoblade uh, Grip do? Is it is it the story? Is it the exploration? Characters? Give us some more detail. Yes. Um, it's, uh, I mean, first off, the environments are fantastic. I mean, like, the Aerith Sea, uh, Satoru Marsh, I think it was called. Um, you know, like, walking into Satoru Marsh at night and watching it light up for the first time. Uh, the story was really cool, like, the world. Like, you know, you're literally on top of two giant robots fighting each other. Like, there's a lot of potential there for world building. Um, the story was cool, soundtrack, fantastic. It's got one of the better, like, real-time RPG combat, uh, like, fighting I've tried before. Um, How did you feel about the pace? It did slow down a bit in the second half, but um, considering how good the first half was, that's, that's pretty understandable. Like, uh, yeah, and it picked right back up at the end, I thought. So getting into my pick. Wait, 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 I have stuff to add. <laughs> All right. This is, I mean, I didn't put it that high on my list. I think it was eight on, on mine. But uh, I actually bought my new 3DS because of this game because uh, a review code came in, and they're like, do you want to review it? And I'm like, I didn't plan to buy the new 3DS XL, but I guess I will to review this game. Um, and it's one of those things where the RPG genre has been one of my favorites for a long time. But I've been finding as I've been getting older, it's been harder to be, uh, to lose myself in a world as much as I was when I was a kid. And Xenoblade, for me, did that again, to where for days at a time, I just lost myself in, in Xenoblade. Um, and every new environment was just so epic and grand. Um, and it's just kind of like, emo uh, I guess, kind of emotional in that aspect too, because of just how grandiose the game was. Well, I never played it. <laughs> Anything else to add on Xenoblade? Because I'm okay with that pick. Yeah. So getting into my, my next selection, I'm going to go ahead and put Splatoon 1 at number 5. Because what Splatoon did is show that Nintendo can successfully create a shooter. It's like, not just a normal shooter, but it's a shooter that screams Nintendo. It's, the mechanics are perfect, the, the aesthetics are are a bright, colorful, uh, gorgeous, and it just feels perfect. I, I've played countless hours of that game, and you can go back to it. It's like the multiplayer, it, it's just spectacular in every way. What makes you choose the first one over the second one? The context of the Wii U. I think what, what uh, Splatoon did, given the Wii U's lack, lack of a player base, uh, sold 13 million units worldwide, and Splatoon 2, I believe, sold 4 million. So. That's a huge attachment, or attachment rate, and I think uh, not only did it sell well, but there was a sense of community with Splatoon on the Wii U that I don't think you got with any other title on that system. So for that reason alone, I would say Splatoon gets that spot. Anything to add? Yeah. So, solve your case. All right. Make your case. I mean. <laughs> okay, for number seven, actually, God. Yeah, okay, for number seven, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver for the DS. These, these games, some of the best remakes that you could ever have, because first off, the original the Gold and Silver were the, the, like one of the best like, sequels to an like a, a exploding franchise that was already amazing. It, it surprised you in giving you, I still believe it's the only Pokemon game that has like 16 gems, right? Yeah. Like, that's incredible. And once you beat the first eight gems, you thought that was the end. But no, little did you know, there's a whole other world to explore right after that. So yeah, I think, I think Pokemon's... Probably, it's my favorite Pokemon game overall. What about you? Yeah. I'll comment on this one later because that's a lot higher up on my list. Uh, but Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver are, are, are definitely the best Pokemon games given everything. Uh, the scale is bigger than, than we've ever seen in terms of Pokemon. And I think narratively, uh, there is a lot there, especially with Red and just the, t the callbacks to the Kanto region. I think if you're a fan of Pokemon, it's really hard not to appreciate what Heart Gold and Soul Silver did. And the Pokemon followed you. What's that? And the Pokemon followed you. Yeah, and, yeah, and you had Pokemon following you, which, which is really cute. <laughs> All right, Eli? 
Alrighty, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put Animal Crossing in at number five and bump everything else down. You don't need to take Splatoon off, that's all right. It's not on my top 10 list, but I don't have a vendetta against it or anything like that. So, um, so the original Animal Crossing game, which I think is the best one, um, is a game that I put hundreds of hours into. I paid off my entire debt, had that gold statue in the middle of your town. I'm sure a lot of you else have also done that. Um, I love the fact that they had the NES games in there. That was actually, I think, my first exposure to NES games because I was, sorry, I was young uh, when, uh, when that game still came out. So uh, I hadn't yet gone back and played NES games, but that was like my first exposure um, with Balloon Fight and, and stuff like that. Um, and I think the, just mechanically, it's just so calming. And uh, I, that was the first time where I bought a second memory card also. So I had like my second town, I'd go back and forth because I wanted to have all the different fruit. Um, it was always sad when your villagers moved away. That was a sad day, but then you get a new one. It would make you all happy. Why, why, are you, why would you choose the original Animal Crossing over something like New Leaf, given that that kind of, that kind of game lends itself to a handheld experience? So I think that, um, so it's a tough argument to make, given that I just said that old games are not as good as you remember them, and I think this pick is mostly nostalgic based, but I think it's the NES games, to be honest. Uh, I think that it's awesome that it has the NES games inside them. Um, and I don't know, I just never got into, I, I played all the other Animal Crossings to date, but I never got into them nearly as much as I did uh, the original. Also, I think it's a little bit overboard how far you can upgrade your house nowadays. I know some people wanna do it, but now you're spending literally like 10 million bells to get your final, uh, house and that's a that's a little excessive so you don't think that like with like new leaf how it added like a bunch of awesome new features but all those things don't matter because the original has nes games which you said are awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay I, I see how you're throwing this argument back at me uh but balloon fight is a genuinely good game <laughs> So <laughs> I think I think I'm a I think I'm cheating a little bit here uh, because I've lumped a bunch of games together. Uh, but I don't know. If you feel another one is better, feel free to change it. I won't get too offended. But uh, that's the one I chose for my list. And before Andrew goes, I would just like to add that this is all really friendly. And there's not really much debate going on right now. But that's just because we haven't created the top ten. Once this top 10 is created, there's gonna be a lot more intense conversation up here because I know Xenoblade is not making it out on this list as number three. Absolutely not. But you can continue. All right. Um, don't appreciate the attack on Xenoblade, but that's okay, I'm here to defend it. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put in the most slept on Nintendo game of all time. Uh, we're gonna put Kid Icarus Uprising at number nine. I thought you were gonna say number two. <laughs> I, mean, I want to protect it. <laughs> now put it in at number nine. Uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. It's like help him with that. Um, yeah, Kid Icarus Uprising. It's like the third Kid Icarus game. I don't know. He had like a Game Boy one and an NES game. Uh, it's like a total revamp for the series. It's a uh, this awesome rail shooter slash third person shooter. It's got this. Uh, Fantastic! It's the third-person shooting you can turn it. You, you play online multiplayer with. It's surprisingly good. Uh, the game got a lot of flack when it came out for the weird controls because you had to like hold the 3DS with one hand. Then Wasn't there like a stand. You had to like aim with the stylus. Wait, didn't the game like come with a stand that you had to put the 3DS on? I never used it. I think it. I think you're right, but I never used it. Like, I remember it also utilized the Circle Pad Pro. Yeah, I. It, it for some people, yeah. I mean, like. There was a bunch of weird control options. Yes, it was very weird controls, but once you got through that first like round of hand cramps, it was fantastic. It had oh. the ability to walk around with the right stick on the Circle Pad Pro and aim with the left. So it was like the was opposite for, of a shooter. Like for left-handed people or something. That's I don't cool. know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the rail shooting was awesome. The It was like a really charming game overall. It had awesome voice acting, uh, really hilarious scenarios where like you'd start a level and Kid Icarus and Palutena would be like, going back and forth with Hades the whole time. Um, pushed the hardware, yeah. Hmm? It, it really pushed the 3DS hardware. It did, yeah, yeah. So just a fantastic, colorful, um, awesome action game overall. A lot of replayability. Anything to add, Eli? It's okay. <laughs> Why? I mean, the game was fun, I played through it, but it's nothing to write home about. Like. 
I didn't even think, I didn't even, it's not balloon fight. <laughs> I didn't even think of that game when I was writing this list. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't like come in the sphere of top 10 for me. So uh, I think I'm gonna take it off at one point, sorry, uh, but it's, it's meh. All right, so getting into my pick, I'm gonna go ahead and take Animal Crossing off the list and slot in Mario Kart Double Dash. Double Dash is definitively the best Mario Kart game. Yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. It had the best uh, selection of stages and the two player lended itself to co-op so well. Um, and I think something about uh, the racing, it was done so well, it, it's like your carts felt as if they were heavy, but it didn't feel slow. And I just think everything Do uh, Double Dash did, especially given uh, the GameCube hardware, uh, was pretty incredible. And I think there's just so many amazing stages uh, to race on in that game. So definitely yeah. number five. And I also think this is one of the few times that the sequel to Double Dash, the Wii, like, was way worse in my opinion. Like, they got rid of the special items. They got rid of, obviously, the two people on the cart. So you can't, like, do two players with one cart, which I thought was really cool. And, I, and they did, honestly don't look very different. Like, the Wii one was not very, very great in my opinion. Any problems with this? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say that Double Dash is not the best Mario Kart. I would say it is a very good Mario Kart, um, but I think 8 Deluxe is just such a better package overall. Like, that's right, yeah, it's got like four times as many stages, and like, I mean, how many of the Double Dash stages are in 8 Deluxe of some capacity? Like, you're talking like a few. Yeah, like, it's like 25% of them almost are in Deluxe already, like, yeah, and Deluxe adds that awesome battle mode and all that, so... And double items. Yeah, yeah, so if I gun for... The double items are really not that big, that big of a... I thought... Of a new, I uh, like you know, that. you can take that up with Brett. Um, yeah, I might come after that one later. Alright. Brett? I'm just, wait, I'm just butthurt you took off Animal Crossing. I will rectify this wrong. Yeah, you can put but, it back on. Uh, I'll just take it off. I, I am hurt, personally. <laughs> Alright. Brett's pick. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, extremely underrated Zelda game. You see, everyone was clamoring for this... Where are you putting it? Oh, number 10. Everyone was clamoring for this mature Zelda game. They announced the, like, they did that, that like, demo for, um, for what everyone, would, like, thought Wind Waker was going to be. And it was, like, a darker, more grittier Zelda. Everyone was ex excited about it. And then Wind Waker showed up, and everyone's like, what the hell is this? This is a cartoon. This is a kid's game. I don't want this. Now there's now it's like the opposite. Everyone pretends like they used to love Wind Waker, but everyone didn't like it. But then Twilight Princess comes out, and it is exactly what they originally wanted, but there wasn't much hype around it, and I don't really get it. And I think it's because the beginning of the game is a drag, and it, it takes, like, forever to get into it. But after that, you get some of the best temples out of it. Actually, in my opinion, the best temples out of any Zelda game. Yeah, you can't really argue that the, the controls of Twilight Princess are stellar, because they are. But I, just, and I think the narrative, the narrative heavy uh, nature of it, it is, is really good. But I do think it, it kind of blurs the lines between dark and, and dreary in not a good way. I think when you play that game for a long period of time, not only does it feel kind of dark and, and lonely and somber, but like visually, it, it looks like blurry. It, it really does not look great um, on, on the Wii. It looked, it looked better on an older TV on the Wii back when it came out. But obviously, Nintendo refused to jump into the HD space. Mm -hmm. So when like all those Xbox 360 games and PS3 games were coming out, it just looked ugly compared to those. But I think for the hardware, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. And depending on the TV. Anything to add on Twilight Princess? No, but since my last turn, there have been three wrong to actions <laughs> taken, and there's so much I need to, like, fix on this list. And get it, let's get into your next But pick. I only get one turn, so I think what I'm gonna do, so first of all, Okami is the better wolf game, okay? There's no discussion, Boring. it's the better game. It looks better, and it, it plays better, it's more innovative, the dungeon design is better. There's so much better really about sad. Okami. <laughs> Second of all, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take Fire Red and uh, Pokemon Fire Red uh, and put it... Don't you dare say it, number eight. I'll say two either. You know what? Actually, I'll leave that one alone. Actually, just, just get rid of Xenoblade. 
Well, the, the reason is I was going to put Fire Red on, but Heart Gold Soul Silver is there, and honestly, I think that I can live with that pick instead of Fire Red. So uh, instead, I'm going to go ahead and put Animal Crossing back on. At, uh, I'll, I'll put it uh, at number five and bump everything else down. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> That's how much of a vendetta I have against Twilight Princess. I would have just swapped it for Double Dash, but uh, I mean, o Okami's the better game. I know you've already spoke a bit about Animal Crossing, but can you explain why it's better than Mario Kart, Double Dash, Splatoon, Donkey Kong Country, it Pokemon Heart Gold? I mean, how is it better than Pokemon thing. Heart Gold and Soul Silver? Here's the that? thing. It was a strategic move, okay? <laughs> I needed all that other stuff to get bumped down because then if I keep bumping, then Icarus is going to fall off. Can Icarus? Uh, and eventually the, the list will resemble something I want to see. Uh, so it was more strategic than anything. If I wanted to compromise, I would have put it like number eight. I but. think Eli just really wants his top ten to be the one that we end up with. He's, he's <laughs> thinking a lot more long term than I am. This is kind of scary. Andrew? All right. Um, yeah, I can kind of see this list turning into something where I disagree with like a good portion of it. So we're going to write one of those wrongs right now. <laughs> You know, I enjoy Splatoon, but it should not be there. I'm gonna swap Splatoon with Star Fox 64. All right, uh, Star Fox 64, I've always really loved the Star Fox series, and 64 is the peak of it. Um, Have you played it recently? Yes, like last week. Okay. <laughs> All right, like I never go more than a couple months without running through Star Fox 64. I've beaten it like 200 sometimes. How do you handle the controls, the date, the very dated controls? Because I mean, you can't really argue that. Well, it. I pick up the N64 controller and I control the game. But it controls. It, it, not, it's it not controls good. It, fine. You can't argue that it controls anywhere near something like a, mo a modern game would. It, know, there, it's just so dated. The 3DS version controls very nicely. The 64 version. When, when did you last play the 64 version? I think you're, yeah. you're, yeah, you're, you're at it. Those controls are really not that bad. It's he wasn't born yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean anything to add. Anything to add. I, I'm gonna get into the game itself. I'm just <laughs> yeah, say, like, go for it. Like you know, um, super like great soundtrack. It's got a lot of great like the rail shooting levels are fantastic. Um, I really like like Zone S is my favorite one. I really like Macbeth with the Landmaster. Uh, it's just such a great game to pick up and run through going for a high score. Um, there's the, so many different routes you can take. And like, it's fun to just, um, I like to just go with like relaxingly like, go through it, not even going for like a high score route or anything. Like, it's just a great game. How do you feel about the longevity of Star Fox? Because of that, of that game specifically? Because I, I don't think you can, it lends itself to something that you can play continuously and, and continue to go back to, but maybe I'm wrong on that. I mean, I continuously go back to it. Like, like, I, like I've got like, I think 70 something hours in the 3DS version. Um, it's got some pretty fun multiplayer, so there's that. I, I don't spend a ton of time on that, but yeah, I'm gonna say like, just chasing high scores gets really addicting in Star Fox 64. Things are getting tense up here, so I'll go ahead and, and make a friendly pick. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey at number two. Um, I think Super Mario Odyssey is definitively the best 3D Mario game, uh, just ahead of 64, because I think it's, in many ways, uh, kind of a, I, I'm not gonna say the sequel to 64, but it is in the, in the same vein, and it does everything 64 does, but sort of modernizes it, makes it look better, and makes it play a lot tighter. I think that Odyssey, uh, the variety of levels, the fact that there are water levels that don't make you want to pull your hair out, it's, and New Donk City, I mean, New Donk City is something that you've, we've never seen in a Mario game before, and I know there's a lot of hate about Mario existing with uh, real humans, but I, I think it's, it's so wacky, and, and it's just, it's so Nintendo, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like Mario Odyssey really was, a, like, the next step for the, like, for the series, and it's just, it's like everything that a Mario game should be, in my opinion. Like, every time I went to a new world, I like, felt joy in my heart. Like, always with a smile on my face. So, yeah, I definitely agree with this one. Yeah, and I think with Switch, what Nintendo is trying to do is sort of reinvent the franchises, and their, their biggest franchises, and, uh, and, and, you know, and push them to the next level. Because I think a lot, the Mario series, Zelda, 
pre before the Switch titles, they had been getting a bit stagnant, and I think that Odyssey was a perfect translation of them, you know, modernizing it. So, yeah. yeah, I'll concur with Odyssey. Uh, um, it's my personal number one, so I'm happy seeing it up there. Uh, yeah, just amazing worlds. It was like, it did feel like the first real sandbox Mario we got in like 15 years, so. Uh, and it, I was so excited for it and it delivered in every aspect, I felt like. I thought it was a great game. It's not on my top 10 list, what? but. Uh, yeah, what? He has Animal Crossing, but not Super Mario Odyssey. Think about that. <laughs> I, think, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's a great game. I don't have too many problems with it on the list. If it had Balloon Fight in it, would it be on the list? <laughs> yeah. You bet. It would be up to number three. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right, Brett. So, some people might be mad at this one, but uh, can you believe we haven't got a Smash Brothers game on here yet? Thank it's you. It's insane. <laughs> but here's the thing, guys. I like Smash 4 more than Melee, and I know a lot of people disagree with that. I just feel like Smash 4 is... So, I'm going to put it in the number three spot. Obviously, I can't play needs to get the hell off this list. Um, it's everything that Smash should be. We got characters that we never expected. The only thing, in my opinion, I thought it was lacking was like a single-player mode, like the Subspace Emissary and Brawl. But other than that, the mechanics, it wasn't as fast as Melee, but it felt better. Like, it felt like way more responsive overall. And just the, the fact that they got like such like amazing third-party games. And obviously, when Ultimate comes out, it's going to be better. I mean, you, it's basically Smash 4, but on like like steroids. So yeah, I think Xenoblade needs to get off here. It's coming and back. Adding to that, I think I think Smash Brothers for Wii U, it uh it, it it's perfect for casual players, but it's also great for the competitive scene. And I think that it's sort of an evergreen title more so than something like Melee or even Brawl because I think those games are a lot have found a lot more specific of an audience where Smash 4 lends itself to all Nintendo fans, so, yeah. All right, um, so up until that last move, six of the games were on my top 10 list, so I was feeling pretty good about that. Um, now it's down five, but I'm gonna go ahead and put Breath of the Wild at number 10. Wow. It's higher up on my list, um, but I'm compromising here because they have other games. Apparently they think are better. Um, so I'll just read my description here that I wrote on the, on, on the website, because I think it's a good description of why I feel strongly about Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was the, was the habitually delayed uh, Zelda game, but when it finally launched, it proved well worth the wait. The game was solitary, grim, and even empty at parts. At, at other times, it was full of hope and energy. Its small dungeons were wonderfully creative. He's reading, guys. He's and it's open his world right for exploration. <laughs> can't just read. Okay, but the point is, the game I thought was one of Nintendo's best um, in terms of allowing a player to really choose their own destiny. I thought the little dungeons um, were wonderful. Um, a lot of people thought that they weren't as deep as they should have been, but I genuinely enjoyed walking into, uh, oh my god, I forgot what they're called, the, the little dungeons. The shrines. Um, I, I genuinely enjoyed walk, walking to a shrine, like wandering around for five minutes and just like figuring it out. And like in your brain, it would kind of snap that what you were supposed to do. And it, those constant moments of like the, the light bulb going off in your head were just consistently enjoyable. I thought the combat was really nice. I actually liked the durability uh, mechanics of the weapons. I didn't mind that they broke down. Um, I didn't like the stamina meter, um, but... Yeah, I hated the stamina. But, uh... Other than that, like, I really enjoyed the game, and I... How'd you feel about the pace? Because I think a, kind of the issue that I have with Breath of the Wild, and I love it, but I think it feels too big at times, and I know there's you're supposed to pave your own path and figure out your own direction, but I think that's not really what a Zelda game needs to be. A, a Zelda game needs to push you in a way, in a direction, and Breath of the Wild kind of fails in that aspect. I think... Uh, so I understand your point. I think the epitome of that was um, in A Link routine world, Between Worlds on the 3DS. I thought that game was not nearly as good as everyone else thought because of the reason that you could play the dungeons in any order. And because of that, they could never get as deep as you really wanted them to go because each item was specialized for a certain dungeon and you never combined the items together in the way that they were used. I don't think that's what ended up happening in Breath of the Wild. You may disagree here. Uh, but I, I genuinely think that the game because even though it was so open, it never like felt overwhelming. You could go and never explore a corner of the map and you would never feel like you were missing out. Uh, I, I thought that you only gained by exploring and you never felt like you were missing out if you didn't. So 
I know that you might disagree, but uh, Breath of the Wild for me is yeah. my second favorite Zelda after Wind Waker. Wow, that's a bold statement. I mean, I think the game is great, and I, I like when I initially played it, I was like, this is, this is not my Zelda game. Like, nothing about this really reminds me of Zelda. And I kind of wrote it off for like a year, and then I picked it up like a while ago. Again, I played through like 60 hours of it, and I really started to grasp like what made it so good, which is which can all be summed up in one word, which is exploration. Like, it's just, it's like a magical world that's at your fingertips. I do think it's too big. I don't think climbing is fun. I think it's slow and boring, and I don't like the stamina bar, and there's no hook shot, so zero out of 10. <laughs> Uh, Andrew? Uh, I, I concur with Breath of the Wild. This is also my second favorite Zelda behind Wind Waker. Um, and because I want Breath of the Wild to stay on this list, um, I have to make a... I want to add Pikmin 2 to the list. Um, and I'm not sure... I'm going to swap it with... No. Um, <laughs> I'm going to swap it with here, guys. Just let me say, if anyone touches Star Fox 64, I'm adding Star Fox Assault. So <laughs> <laughs> that is a threat. Um, Swap it with Mario Kart Double Dash. I want to keep the GameCube protected. What was it again? Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2. Uh, so Pikmin 2, it was like, you know, they took everything they did right with Pikmin 1, and uh, they removed the time limit, which was cool for Pikmin 1, but once they took off that strain, they were able to do a lot more with the game, it felt like. Um, the It was really fun to just explore at my own pace. Like, if I felt like it, I could take a day and just build up a bunch of Pikmin sprays. Um, exploring for random treasures was really fun. There was a lot more to find than the original Pikmin. Um, the multiplayer mode was surprisingly fantastic. Um, I play that a lot today with my friends. Um, I think it's been at most a couple months since I last played it. It's like this capture the flag style thing with Marvel. It just works really well. I'm, I'm personally not a big Pikmin guy, but the question I would pose to you is why is it better than Pikmin 3? Because I think that is widely looked upon as the, pretty much the best Pikmin game, and I'm just interested. Um, I see people more split a lot myself, but um, I say I think uh, Pikmin Three, I don't know, felt a bit more scripted. I don't know. I've only played Pikmin Three once because it didn't really do it for me when I played it. It was still good, but um, it felt like Pikmin Two just had more going on, and I liked Pikmin Two's multiplayer more, so that's what pushes it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and swap Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the best 2D Mario platformer, Super Mario Bros. 3. We gotta get some NES love up, in, up on this list. So yeah, Super Mario Bros. 3 um, sort of takes a shell of what the original Super Mario Bros. is and just adds to it in every way. I think it's really cool that sort of behind the scenes narrative that it's everything is happening within a set and you're going, you're starting from beginning to end and, sort of behind a backdrop. I think that was just a cool little detail. Um, I think you, you can't deny it, its legacy due to the fact that there's so many uh, costumes that were, that were introduced in it, like the Tanuki suit, I think. It's pro probably maybe the second most iconic Mario suit and that was introduced in Mario 3, along with you know the frog suit that was super fun to use. And I just think every, everything about Mar Super Mario Brothers 3 is smooth and fluid. Yeah, I, I also think it's an amazing game. I do think Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario Brothers One, is the best of them all. Which I know you guys, you y'all said I was crazy, but um, you are, you are. I think Super Mario Brothers Three is like one of the most perfect games out there. Like, just from a gameplay perspective, like, just everything it does is amazing. And I I also thought about this. Why didn't we just cheat and put like the collection from like Super Nintendo on here instead That's of? That's cheating. I, I mean, he he said Animal Crossing because it had all the many S games. Oh, yeah. But um, do you think that we should get some like audience? Yeah, people? I do. D does any of the audience members have? Wait, have Brent a should take his turn. Yeah. So we finish oh, yeah. out a round and then we'll, we'll go to the audience. Yeah, we'll finish the round and then I'll have uh, CJ bring you guys the mic. Um, right. I want to put on here. Uh, what? This is this is your list. <laughs> what game are you looking for? Oh, know. I mean, Super Mario sixty four needs to be on this list, right? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and take off. Wait a second. Yeah, I'm gonna take off uh, Donkey Kong Country. Uh, Come on. Maybe it's the best. Gonna get I'm country. sure really someone good. from the audience will uh, make sure to put that game back on there. Actually, I'll just throw the DS version on there because I like that one better. Um, yeah, Super Mario 64 is amazing. Um, it changed like 3D games, like just like uh, Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Like those two games came out 
like fairly close together and like Nintendo just like changed the world with these games. Like you, you saw tons of video games that tried to copy them after that, especially like like the mascot games. And just from like the level design, the graphics, everything was amazing. Um, I think some of the hype around Super Mario 64 is nostalgia fueled in the sense that when you go back, it definitely does not feel as good as you remember. I think Odyssey is something that feels just very similar, but just they the tech the technology improved the. the the game development got got easier, and I and I think that Super Mario 64, though it, it did do a lot of things uh, that kind of set the standard for 3D platformers going forward, and I don't think that can be overlooked. All right. Um, oh, wait, were you going to say something? Uh, no, it's fine. Okay, so as we move into the audience, there is a rule that we uh, keep in mind. You don't just get a change this list all willy-nilly. We don't need elements from the Wii making its way onto the list. Somebody um, put Ocarina of Time back on this list. <laughs> so uh, so as we go around, when you put your list, we're then gonna go to the, the room as the whole is gonna vote. Um, and if there's more than half negating your decision, it won't be sustained. So the room is veto power over your choice. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, and be, I guess, political uh, when it comes to your uh, moves on this list. Okay, I'm really bad on talking on, on mics, so uh, bear with me, but I personally don't really have a huge nostalgia thing with uh, GoldenEye, but I'm surprised to not hear you guys mention that at all. And I'm surprised, I came a few minutes late, but I didn't hear anything about Ocarina of Time other than you just mentioning it a few It was number one on the list for a little hot sec. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm surprised it's not on the list, exactly. personally. Like, I, you, I would why, say- Why should talk... it be on the list? Wait, which game are you putting on the list yeah. here? Ocarina of Time. Okay. okay, at which spot? I'm surprised it's not top four at the least, but it's in my top three all time, personally. Okay. So you're, which, which spot? Oh, I get to choose what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to do the same rules as the as they were? Uh, yeah, same rules, so you can bump, because I don't want to remove specific games that are at the top because they belong on group. the list. I'm yeah. going to just say, for now, Animal Crossing or Pikmin. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, you got to choose one because we're going to have the room. Animal Crossing. Okay. So, put on green. I feel like this is a hard argument to make. Okay. Uh, so, if you want to veto that choice, please put your hand up. Okay. I don't think I have the uh, votes. <laughs> There's a specific game that I have in mind. There's like a franchise that I haven't been heard once talked about, and that's Fire Emblem. Ooh. It's on and my list. It's on your list. Awesome. Which one? Because like I, I, I have Sacred Stones on mine. Oh, okay. I was just gonna be general about it and just pick Awakening because that was the first one I played. And like when I researched more into that game, that game like saved the Fire Emblem company and just there's like an energy to it that just makes me feel great about playing. Like, like I'll just like, just a quick story. When I traveled for like two weeks uh, back in my country in the Philippines, I had a Switch and a 3DS. It was Zelda on, with Zelda on the Switch and Fire Emblem on the 3DS. And I didn't touch the Switch for the whole two weeks because like for the past two weeks, most of what I played was Fire Emblem Awakening. So I'm not gonna replace Breath of the Wild. I really like it, but I wanna put Fire Emblem Awakening at the number nine spot, just because I want it there. It's nice. Boo. Bad choice. No, All right, kidding. so please, so we're gonna do veto. If you want to veto that choice, please yeah. put your hand up. Please veto that choice. I think that's over half. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and you guys are gonna have to go a little quicker so we can get more. At least it got recognition. I just want to say I was totally on your side with that one. Fire Awakening was like my number eleven. So. My. I specifically voted to veto that, not because I disagree with Fire Emblem being up there, but while Awakening definitely saved the franchise, I myself have some severe issues with the game's writing, particularly because when compared to previous Fire Emblem games, like Sacred Stones, the villains were terrible. Yeah, that's true. All right, so. Yeah, so let's, let's go a little quicker so we can get a lot of people in. Quicker. 
Uh, all right, uh, remove Pikmin 2, add in Link's Awakening. It is the uh, best on, 2D guys. Zelda game. <laughs> it uh, did so many things with just two controls, combining the items together, like the boots and rock bed, feather or bob and arrows. Incredible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna say this should be vetoed because I just want to make my case real quick. We cannot have four Zelda games on the list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would be four. Okay, raise your hand if you want to veto. Veto. Okay. Uh, pretty cool. Ooh, wait. Split. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Who doesn't veto? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think he gets vetoed. Sorry, I was I was on your side. I'm good with Link's Awakening, I'm not Link's good Awakening. with attacking Pikmin 2. Like. <laughs> Alright, alright. Brett, I got vetoed. It got vetoed. Yeah. Oh, Leave okay. Pikmin 2 on. Pikmin 2. Alright, I saw your hand. Okay. I'm going to say it, because even if it's cheating, remove Mario Bros. 3 and put Mario All Stars plus Mario World. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Kind of you get the best of everything. Yeah. I think all it's presentation okay. of NES, Super NES, and it's all in one nice collection. I'll be honest, we didn't think of that. That's a very fair point. Okay. Anybody want to veto that? I don't think you're going to get the right. I don't think, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, you. Um, so. So uh, I don't really know what to put on, but I hate Super Mario 64DS. I think it's <laughs> inferior to the original because of the four directional controls instead of the 360 controls. But, but if you play on 3DS, you get the oh. pad. Yeah, but it's still like only eight directions. Yeah, take it off. Really. Put another game on there. Um, so I will put... Oh, I don't really know what I'll put instead. I'll say Smash Melee. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Raise your hand if you want to beat up. Oh. Veto two. Okay, if you don't want to veto, I think that okay. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. You guys are showing no. your age. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I think is there any time for you? Probably have time for one more. And one or two more. Yeah, one more. Just to clarify, I've actually played Breath of the Wild, but I have a lot of friends who have. I don't think it's great. I see it. It doesn't look like an interesting game. I was just, so I just want to replace it with Super Mario Galaxy 2. I thought that was really good. I just want to make my case really quick. I, I think you can't really accurately take off a game if you haven't played it because I would argue in the case of Breath of the Wild, you have to spend a lot of time with it. It's not something you're going to pick up and play and completely understand. You have to explore. You have to get to know the world, get to know the characters. And, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you can't make that point, but I would say... Play 20 to 30 hours, and then your opinion might change, but... I think any time you have to say, after about 30 hours, it really starts to pick up. <laughs> that, that sort of speaks for a hot night game. Give me kind of... But if that's the type of game it is, it, you're right. supposed to play it for 50 right, hours let's, plus. Let's do one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it's up. Let's do one last one. Wait, wait, is there... Have to vote. Sorry, is there a veto? Is there a non-veto? That was five. One, two... Three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's the same. So we'll put Galaxy Two on there. Galaxy Two. Mm. And I think with that, um, we're. Well, I think we have time for one more. I will give you one more, but then after that, one more. you must cut it. All right. And, okay. and make your cases quick. <laughs> uh, all right. Back here. Oh. They, they back there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, somewhere back there. Back all right. There. I will let you. I've seen your hand a few times. So I think that there should be some justice for the Splatoon franchise on this list. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I played a lot of Splatoon 2 after I got online for Nintendo Switch, and I think it's a really good game. So I'm gonna replace Smash 4 with Splatoon 2. At least there's yeah. Smash up there. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's true. There is already a Smash up there. All right. So raise your hand if you want to veto. Yeah. Can I modify it? <laughs> I, I don't think so. No, we have to two, one, two. Yeah, okay, how many vetoes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many non-vetoes? Or just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So that's the same. So. 
So, so it's it's Splatoon, Splatoon two. two now. Splatoon two. That's <laughs> this list, guys. <laughs> this list is not what this I is this is how politics works. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll close out the panel by saying, before yesterday when we were prepping all this, I I was like. I know Wind Waker is going to be number one because that's the game that we all can agree on is, is great. And I'm happy at least that came true. All right. And I just say thank you guys all for coming. Um, this, is, this has been awesome. Thanks so much. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel called uh, Nintendo Enthusiast, obviously. Anything else? Yeah, go to NintendoEnthusiast.com, read all our stuff, and we'll be outside if you guys want to like meet up, take pictures or anything. And yeah, thanks again for coming. We, we really appreciate it. <laughs> Come back next year. Yeah, this is next.